welcome back to my channel. So first of all, happy Women in Horror Month. So for those who don't know, February is usually uh, a month of celebration for women working within the horror film industry. Uh, whether they're filmmakers, writers, uh, special effects artists, um, actresses, authors, writers, novelists, you name it. Uh, basically, this was an initiative that was started by Anna Neurotica in 2010. That was the first Women in Horror Recognition Month. And ever since then, every year it has just grown in scope. And now you have events all over the world um, that aim to celebrate women working in the genre, and uh, both in front and behind the camera, and helping get them more widely known. For those who don't know, uh, this also happens to be uh, the topic of the thesis project that I did. Um, not Women in Horror Month, but Women Horror Filmmakers. I started my thesis exactly 10 years ago, so in 2009, and I completed it in 2011. Um, during the course of the thesis, there was a first Women in Horror Month, which obviously just um, made the whole topic extremely relevant, but also extremely hard to keep up with. When the project started, I wanted to do a documentary about women horror filmmakers, uh, but um, as the movement began and more and more uh, women filmmakers came to uh, the forefront, and more and more women got to direct higher budget films, it was extremely hard to keep up with it. So at some point I made the decision to uh, not actually follow the rise of the movement and to actually uh, use it as more of um, a look at the state of women in horror in the industry as it was right before uh, the movement began. One way I found around, well, I'm gonna say problem, but it's not really a problem, it's actually a great thing for women filmmakers that it, it has grown to be such a big movement, um, was that whatever I would put in my documentary automatically would become dated. Uh, by the time that the whole research would be done. And since I couldn't really afford to stay in school, in school for a whole decade to cover the entire movement, um, I decided to get rid of the idea of doing a single documentary. And instead what I did is that I took all of the interview that I recorded, all of the footage, um, edited them into small uh, web-friendly segments. So the web series is only a small part of my thesis project. The web series I titled it uh, Bloody Breast uh, Women, Feminism and Horror Films and is now available uh, on my channel here on YouTube. There's a playlist just for it. So by doing this, um, it would also allow me to continue and eventually build upon it, which I've been wanting to do for years, but I never unfortunately got around to it. But now, this year, because it's the 10th anniversary of the beginning of my project, I figure it would be a great time to actually uh, pick that project back up and just try to continue it and provide more uh, content for it so that um, it would give it a little bit of an updated version. Also, over the years, a lot of people have asked me uh, about my thesis project because uh, the documentary segments were one thing, but there's a whole research that went with it um, that was a hundred page document which I have not yet published and a lot of people have told me they would like to read it but basically my thesis the moment I defended it it was already outdated so I felt like I could not publish it as is like I would need to write a whole new chapter to help contextualize everything that happened and like you know everything that's to come and to really like help uh, justify obvious omissions and that was a massive undertaking that I did not necessarily have the time or resources for. Now, February 2019, I decided to um, offer an overview of my thesis project as a series of short vlogs. The vlogs will each cover one chapter of the thesis, so um, ideally you would want to watch all of them in order because they're gonna build upon each other. That's my contribution for this year's Women in Horror Month, and hopefully it will inspire you uh, to go out and seek the work of women uh, horror directors, and will get you interested in the topic. For those who are not familiar with thesis projects, at the master's level, uh, usually it includes an overview of the academic literature on a topic, 
which is then analyzed and from which a new argument is formed and defended. In my case, I was dealing with a topic that didn't have anything written on, on it before. So I took a little bit more of an hybrid approach where uh, I did the literature overview of what I found existed about the topic of gender and horror, uh, both gender representation, but also reception theory. Uh, but then I supplemented new data uh, to take into consideration and I built my argument um, by linking this like new sets of data, namely the interviews that I conducted and the panel discussion that happened with the academic texts that were part of the project. So now, without further ado, let's dive into Horror Girls Resistance and Agency within the interpretive community of women horror filmmakers. I know this is a little bit of a tongue twister. Welcome to academia. Let's start with the introduction. So how did I come to work on this project? Well, about 10 years ago, uh, the film Jennifer's Body came out in theater. Uh, this was a film that was written by Diablo Cody and directed by Karine Kusama. And there was a lot of press about the fact that this was the first feminist horror film and that this was like oh shocker a horror movie directed by women and like journalists were all like what women like horror what is this and i was like seriously seriously guys at that point i had been making short films for about 10 years most of them were horror i had been to different festivals all over the place and i had met a lot of other women who were who not only loved horror but also were directing horror films themselves so I thought like that's such a weird thing to have such a huge like the whole marketing campaign basically being built around the fact that this was the first horror film directed by women and like that it was such a huge like novelty and I was like there's been women horror directors since the beginning of cinema like you know it was just like I don't know to me it felt like it felt very strange but I just followed this with great interest. Like I was starting my graduate program at Concordia University. Um, I was studying um, as part of a master's program in communication and media studies. So obviously anybody who was studying media back then probably were talking about that in classes. So um, we were having all these discussions, especially in my gender and in media class, about oh are can horror films be feminist and like ooh, what about like women directing horror what does it mean and i was so shocked that most of the texts that we were reading were basically what you'd expect the stereotypical cliched academic texts about how horror is a misogynist genre uh, it's bad for women it's demeaning women are victim they get killed violence against women like in the media and blah 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 so obviously, um, I was growing a little bit annoyed in those classes, seeing that the discussion going around in circles and like just hearing all these people who didn't know anything about the horror industry and horror genre talking about horror as if they knew everything about it. And I was like, <sighs> yeah. So at some point, I stood up and I just, I, I just, I had to contribute. And I said, well, I make horror films. I've been a horror fan since I was a kid. And I disagree with all of those texts that we're reading. I do not think that they are relevant anymore. I do not feel that they reflect the reality of most of the horror genre. And I personally, I'm a woman, I make horror films, and I consider myself as a feminist, and I do not think that there's anything wrong with the horror genre. Personally, as a side note, I find most romantic comedies way more demeaning to women than horror films are. But that's a discussion for another day. Here I was trying to convince uh, my classmates and professors that horror can be empowering for women, women can be interested in horror, and they can want to make films like that. That's when one of my colleagues just turned to me, and I still remember the exact words. She looked at me and she said, you are the embodiment of everything that is wrong with women today. I was like, wow. I was a little bit shocked and I honestly did not know what to respond. So here I was, I went on for about a week just obsessingly like thinking about what she was saying. I'm like, was it 
was it true? Was I really, like, was I part of the problem? Like, is something wrong with me? Like, what is wrong with me? It's just like, really, it shook me. It's just like, really, like, rattled me. And I didn't like that. So, I didn't want her to be right. Like, I, I really, because I didn't feel that way. Like, I didn't feel that it was wrong for me to like horror. I didn't think that horror was wrong. I tried to read everything I could get my hands on about women and horror, um, more precisely about women who direct horror and if their work are different and what it means when women direct horror. I just wanted to find the right arguments uh, to know how to answer to such an accusation, to be able to f defend myself if ever that would happen again, but mostly I also wanted to understand more about myself. So I was extremely disappointed when I didn't find anything about women horror directors and I, I, I kept asking myself how can this be? Like I've seen so many women directing horror. That's when it just clicked. I realized there it is. I've got my thesis project. I took the idea to my thesis supervisor and I showed him a list of all the mainstream horror films that were directed by women and pointed him to the fact that I couldn't find any academic literature about um, women directing horror. And also to build my case, I proposed to mostly focus on the more independent uh, underground and DIY uh, community of filmmakers. It feels to me that um, if we compare films with bigger budgets to truly independent films and more underground projects, a director will have a little bit less uh, say, per se, in the final product of a bigger budgeted film. Or they might like take the gig just as a directing gig, but they might not be huge horror fans in themselves, as opposed to like smaller in like, you know, independent projects and underground projects. Um, a lot of them, like, you know, their labors of love, a lot of those filmmakers are horror fans first and foremost, and a lot of them either have no budget or like they're self-financed. So really for anyone to make a small independent or underground horror film, um, you have to truly love the genre and you have to absolutely want to work within that genre. These are the women that I wanted to talk to because I wanted to know why they love horror. I wanted to be able to get a better idea of like what it is that uh, was appealing to these women, that was attracting them to the genre. From then on, I did a very thorough research on different methodology. Uh, I'm gonna skip that whole part because it's honestly very complex and very boring. All that to say that the project that I ended up uh, doing was what is commonly referred to as an autoethnographic project. Autoethnography is a form of qualitative research in which an author uses self-reflection and writing to explore anecdotal and personal experience and connect this autobiographical story to wider cultural, political, and social meanings and understandings. Basically it says I'm studying this group, but I am part of this group. So I'm also using my own personal self, my own personal experience, and my own personal biases to advance the research and be able to address certain topic that somebody who doesn't know anything about or who comes from the outside uh, would know to address. That was also one of the main selling point of the project. Since there was nothing written about the topic, I proposed a first foray into it, but from the inside. I'm going to frame my questions in a way that's going to be representative of the experience of those participants. So obviously uh, there was a lot of like ethical questions that I had to answer about that, but long story short, my project and methodology was approved and I got to go ahead to start. So yay! So that brings us to May 2009 and I'm like, okay, let's begin. So where do I start? I knew three other filmmakers, women filmmakers in Montreal, and that was it. <laughs> but I had found out about the Vistra Film Festival, which uh, at the time was a virtual film festival, meaning there was no physical uh, screenings. Instead, what it meant is that uh, people would submit their films and then the final selection would both come out on DVD that people could purchase uh, online and the selection would also be submitted to other festival as a short program. 
So uh, what was interesting is that this festival was initially marketed as a feminist horror film festival. So obviously that was my starting point in my research. So I reached out to uh, its founder, Shannon Lark, who is a writer, director and actress. And I told her about my project and I asked her if there's any way that she would be able to help connect me with some people and if she would be willing to participate in the project and to have me talk about her festival. And then I crossed my fingers really really hard because I didn't have that much more to go on. So not only did she say yes, but I'm also extremely thankful because she was extremely extremely helpful in uh, helping me uh, line up a first round of interview with uh, some of the women filmmakers that she knew and um, previous participant in the festival. In parallel to that, she also connected me uh, with Heidi Hanikat, who back then was writing uh, under the name Heidi Martinuzzi. She was running a film news and review website about women in horror. Uh, back then it was called Pretty Scary, then it changed name several times uh, before settling on Planet Etheria. Heidi was also extremely helpful in connecting me with some of the women that she knew and first thing I knew, I had a list of women to interview, which was great. I could finally get started working, so I just drafted questions and I dove right in and started interviewing them. So, what came out of these interviews? Now would be a good time to watch the Bloody Breast segments if you haven't seen them, as they will give you a good idea of what the interviews were like, uh, what came out of them, and what they were about. But, all that being said, I was only just getting started with looking at the existing literature about gender and horror, which proved crucial in forming the main argument of my thesis. What is this argument and what was this all about? Well, you will have to tune in next time as I will talk about reception theory. More precisely about the underlying social coding inherent in the horror genre. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of my uh, thesis overview and if there's anything that I said that wasn't clear or you have a question or you want to know more about please uh, comment below and I uh, will answer as soon as possible so until next time sweet nightmares or something I need to find a better outro yeah bye